Today let's talk about a very important soil microbial organism. This is called silica solubilizing bacteria, also called as silicate solubilizing bacteria. We all know for crop nutrition, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium are very important. These are called, you know, the major elements required for crop nutrition. Similarly, we all know micronutrients like magnesium, manganese, zinc, iron, molybdenum, boron, then other elements like calcium are all important and we all know about it. But then we all fail to recognize a most important element which goes into plant system that is silica now it has been taken for granted for ages silica is there it goes into the root system and then to plant so we took it for granted in certain plants like gramine sugarcane rice etc you'll be surprised to know silica uptake from the soil is twice means two times more than combined requirement of nitrogen plus phosphorus plus potash imagine two times the requirement of NPK that means if we call NPK as you know macronutrients and major nutrients we should call uh, silica as a mega nutrient this silica when it goes to plant system cell wall becomes target and what happens the plants become erect like we have backbone the plants can stay erect and thereby the plant will be able to you know it will not lodge it will offer a sort of a barrier for fungal mycelial penetration and mites and thrips kind of sucking insects are not able to you know basically uh, serrate or do the serration thereby the plant becomes more stronger can withstand the pressures of sucking insects and can withstand certain attacks of fungus also having said this this factor of uh, advantage of acilica is known to most people but another very big striking feature of silica when it goes to plant system is it imparts tremendous drought tolerance imagine we do experimentation we take a pot like this put silica bacteria silica solubilizing bacteria and another example pot what we call control pot the same plant you can take eggplant you can take uh, okra, you can take spinach, you can take beans. We have done experiments with many, many crops. And we put the water in the pond until we get the plant germination done. Then put the pots during daytime outside like this. And night time, we put the pots inside the house so that the dew, the water, doesn't disturb the experiment. The pots which where we have applied silica and second is a control. We stop watering completely after germination is done with no more water. Very interestingly, the pots without any silica solubilizing bacteria application, they die, they dry within about say five to six days of time or one week of time plants or the pots where we have applied silica solubilizing bacteria continues to grow and without a drop of water addition you will see the plant growing accumulating the chlorophyll it, green, it remains green keeps growing and the silica solubilizing bacteria amazing properties observed this kind of a tremendous drought tolerance we have data to show that after applying silica solubilizing bacteria, plants are able to survive and grow to the extent of even 
something like 50 days, 55 days, 60 days with zero water. That is the ability of silica when it goes into soil, into, from soil to a plant system. But unfortunately, this silica is not able to go as much as required by the plant because the bacteria which we took it for granted for millions of years today has been depleted. This silica solubilizing bacteria count has come down in soil, therefore silica uptake is getting reduced year by year. Plants are becoming susceptible to drought. They are susceptible to small insect attack, susceptible to fung fungus attack, mycelial attack. All this immunity breakdown is coming because silica is not able to go as much as required by the plant system. And how does it work? Well, a lot of science will have to still figure it out, how and why of this. But I can give you a sort of an ancient Indian example. All of our scriptures in India, holy scriptures like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Vedas, were all written in palm leaves. Palm leaves were commonly used by writers, saints, rishis to write the scriptures, science, Ayurveda, medicine, surgery, all science was written on that. And even the holy script. After hundreds of years, in case thousands of years also, these palm leaves remain as they are. One can read them very clearly. No fungus attacks these palm leaves. No yeast, no mold, no insect, no fungus. Why? Our wise saints, the rishis, wisdom, man of people of wisdom, probably knew very well that this palm leaf is full of silica and if silica is more the attack of fungus and insects will not be there so they were wise similarly just see the deserts so many palm trees or dead palms are there how did nature choose the dead palm by natural evolutionary process the plants which can sustain with less water which can withstand that kind of a drought of the desert, that plant can survive. That's how they palm survive. And palms, as a whole, as I explained, have ability to take soil, silica, and accumulate in plant system. So what we did, we tried to see how good, good bacteria we can isolate. Now we take science help. We could get a good isolate of silica solubilizing bacteria from the deep quartz mines. Imagine between the layer of quartz, a bacteria is there, living for millions of years, eating the quartz. If we are able to isolate that, normal soil, normal silica, is a very soft item for this particular bacteria. Therefore, this isolate was selected, we did a sequencing, deposited in Budapest Treaty recognized depository and AgriLife has the access benefit sharing agreement with our state biodiversity board and we pay royalty for the habitat from where this particular bacteria was isolated. Therefore, this silica solubilizing bacteria is legal, it is ethical, highly scientific isolate and this is a very 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 important soil bacteria to be used which we use in many applications. Silica solubilizing bacteria normally we recommend and blend with nitrogen fixing bacteria, phosphor bacteria, potash mobilizing bacteria, other prebiotics. What happens is that the soil is basically a host for various microbes. It's a microflora, microbiome quality. When we give back the soil with this blend of bacteria, they are able to survive better because we don't need dramatic 75 days zero water in situation in the, in the, in the field. A farmer, when it rains, he does the sowing because soil moisture is there. But unfortunately, after one week, 10 days, also the follow-up rain is not there. 
then whatever crop is sown, what happens? They start drying. Farmer will have to go for another round of sowing. He is more money, and the frustration sets in, and that is how his aspirations get adversely affected. If we are able to give a seed dressing with the silica bacteria, along with <coughs> nitrogen fixing bacteria, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria, other PGPRs, trichoderma, then some vitamins, we are able to get a good seed dressing and at minimal dose we are able to do the entire uniform dressing and maybe even if couple of weeks there is no rain the plant vigor is still there and plants continues to live and then in the next cycle of rain the plant comes back thus silica solubilizing bacteria is a very very important bacteria which we have to realize it now why this bacteria has come down in soil overuse of fertilizers abuse of fertilizers, chemical pesticides, and more importantly, the herbicides. With the labor problem becoming, you know, problem increasing year after year after year, farmers are compelled to use more herbicides. And we are directly spraying on the soil. And this bacteria is going to deplete further. Therefore, we need to replenish the soil with this kind of bacteria. Thus, this silica solubilizing bacteria is a very important part of the soil microbiome which we have to replenish and we are happy to say we are able to offer this product in concentrated form along with a blend of other bacteria in any form which the market requires, requires it. Thank you. What is the shelf life of uh, silica solubilizing bacteria? Silica solubilizing bacteria is basically a bacillus a gram-positive endospore-forming bacteria. We do fermentation, centrifugation, and spray drying. Spray drying involves a drop-down temperature from 170 degree on the top to 70, 80 degree on the bottom. That means very hard endospores only can survive and come down. And once it's you know, collected as a technical grade powder, being an endospore farming bacteria, under ambient conditions also, it can, we can store it for three, four, five years. And it can be stored at most concentrated form of, you know, 10 to power of 11, 10 to power of 12. That means extremely small quantity required for formulation. So under ambient conditions, it is, we can store it. It can be applied to soil, as we said, it can be 35 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius, 45 degree, 48 degree also because these bacteria has come from such a harsh uh, production mechanism. So there is a big, good shelf life for the product. What would you recommend the shelf life to be uh, printed on a label at the end? When we normally recommend this? silica solubilizing bacteria as a member of consortium with other bacteria like nitrogen fixing bacteria, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria, potash bacteria plus other nutrients. We recommend two years shelf life to be printed on the label. Uh, and what are the potencies that you are offering for silica solubilizing bacteria? We can offer talc based 1 into 10 power 8 CFU per gram. We can give water soluble powder one time 10 power 9 per gram. We can give 1 into 10 power 10 per gram. So we can give 10 power 8, 10 power 9, 10 power 10 also. So 10 power 10 kind of a concentrate product, maybe just about 25 grams to 50 grams enough per acre. That means maybe like, you know what, 75 grams to 150 grams per hectare. Thank you. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much.